Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Thanks for coming back and tuning back in for our October 2022 Tesla Solar Panels and Powerwalls monthly update. October is going to be a short month here in terms of updates. However, I just want to let you know we're going to continue to do these uh, fall and winter month updates as I fill in the spring ones as they happen. We'll get caught up shortly here for you. Um, but with October, basically we're at a year of having our system with PTO. So I would expect to have a yearly true-up statement about right now. However, with PG&E, it's not that simple. Uh, basically, we have two electricity providers. One of them, PG&E, the other one is Valley Clean Energy. Um, let me just read off the paper here exactly how Valley Clean Energy describes their relationship with PG&E. They say, PG&E passes VCE generation charge service charges on to us, retaining their own service charges for transmission and delivery repairs and billing. So, officially we have PTO from PG&E that is late October. Their true update for us is late October, but for whatever reason, Valley Clean Energy doesn't do their true update until April. Actually, to call them to figure out this information because I just figured it would be the same as PG&E, but of course, it's not going to be that simple. So, we're actually not going to know our exact true-up amount until April. Basically, PG&E did their true-up with us. Uh, all we do is pay monthly uh, minimum charges with them, generally about $10 or $11 now. Um, we are net exporters. We produce in excess. So we don't really ever have to pay PG&E other than those minimum charges. Uh, we will get non-bypassable charges, which are about three or four cents uh, per kilowatt hour, just depending on if we need to use the grid or not. But generally, we don't pay PG&E too much. Valley Clean Energy is going to be the one that's sending us a check for our excess solar production in April. So we'll see how that goes. But like I said, uh, not too much going on in October. As always, if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit the like button, or if you need a referral for your system, click down below there and use it. Let's look at the data. Our house usage in October was 1,088.5 kilowatt hours. In October of last year, it was 1,019.7 kilowatt hours. Essentially, they're the same. Uh, this still follows our trend of you know an extra family member in the household, so we're just running stuff a little bit more. Um, essentially, those are the same year to year. Um, we do tend to transition in the you know, October months from going from using AC 24-7 like we did in September um, and then transitioning to not really using anything for a couple weeks until the heat kicks on. So our usage does typically drop like this. Now, as you'll see here in September, we use 1,330 kilowatt hours. That's about a 20% reduction. Now that's looking at about 44 kilowatt hours per day in September down to about 35 kilowatt hours per day in October. And that really is the difference that running the AC all the time makes. For us, our system draws about five kilowatt when it's running. So that's about two hours less of AC every month. It really makes a difference. September was also unnaturally hot for us. So that made a big difference there too. Um, as always, I say this probably every month, change your air filters here because as we transition from going to AC 24 seven and then constantly running, you're gonna go to heat and you don't want dust in the system, you wanna be running efficiently. So change your air filter now before you forget about it so the heat kicks on and you're good to go. All right, let's look at solar now. So October had a pretty much banner month for solar production. Last year we produced 1130 kilowatt hours. This year we're up to 1250. 53.2 kilowatt hours. That's about a 10% or so increase. It's all about the weather. We really didn't have any weather here during the month of October, not really any clouds, no you know rain or anything. We had a perfect month. So as you can see in that graph there, it's pretty much linear from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. Now what's cool to note there is beginning of the month, 51 or so uh, kilowatt hours of production at the peak. Um, at the bottom, it's all the way down to 32 kilowatt hours or so. So that's about a 40% decrease there. Now what's important to note 
you know, month to month bit or year to year basically is that we didn't really have a fire season this year. Usually we do. Usually we end up with a bit of smoke that knocks our production numbers down. We had that a little bit in 2021, but not so much, um, but basically nothing this year. So very thankful for that. Hopefully the rain keeps on coming and we, you know, don't have to worry about that in the upcoming years. Um, but looking at last month in September, we produced about 1,435 kilowatt hours. This is about a 12% or so decline from September to October. However, it's just normal as the production numbers start going down. This really is just what's gonna happen every month to month until you get to the bottom of your production numbers in December and January. Now, before we move on to power wall numbers, I wanna make sure with it being fall that you go outside and take a look at your panels. Make sure with the leaves falling that nothing's obstructing them. There's no sticks or you know anything on them that could be causing any issues. You also wanna make sure that there aren't animals sticking anything underneath it, acorns, leaves, etc. Make sure that's all clear. You might need to install some gutter guards if you don't already have them, or just in general, just make sure that your panels are clear and unobstructed. That'll get you the best production numbers as you go into these kind of lean months during the winter. But let's look at the power wall numbers here. So as you can see, in October of this month, we discharged about 623 kilowatt hours, and that was about 651 uh, kilowatt hours uh, the year previous. These are nearly identical numbers, and what I want to note here is that basically we're seeing about 50% of our power wall discharge every night in October. Now, this is with three power walls, so if you had two power walls, it would be closer to using both of them. Um, for us, uh, you know, definitely the third one is needed, uh, especially during the summer for the AC. Um, but during these winter months here, um, basically we can get away with using about half of their capacity. Now, if you look at the month before though here in September, we used 700 or we discharged 710 kilowatt hours to the uh, from the power walls, I should say. Now these were from VPP events, um, as you can see by the gray on the graph. And these are going to be a little bit more discharged than a normal day. Essentially, these are going to drain our battery, so we're going to discharge more compared to a normal night where we're only using 50-60% of the battery. So those numbers are going to add up. So essentially, these are about the same. However, you know, October again, using less AC, so we aren't going to use the power walls as much going forward. Now the last section we'll take a look at here is net grid use. In October this year, we sent back 81.2 kilowatt hours of the grid. Last year, we only drew 5.4 kilowatt hours from the grid. Keep in mind last year, we didn't have PTO until the end of October, so we weren't able to actually send anything back to the grid. In the beginning of the month, you'll see the, the little bits of blue, and that's when our system wasn't fully functioning. So between those two, we weren't actually able to get any negative. Then you can look at this month here in October, we were sending about 10 to 15 kilowatt hours back to the grid every day. However, you can see those big blue spikes there and those were days when we charged the car that was empty all the way to full and just needed stuff around the house more. So we usually, you know, honestly have a bit more back to the grid during this month, but with that kind of usage, it's just that, you know, 80 or so kilowatt hours back to the grid. Still pretty good at looking at the numbers from last year. However, uh, you know, with October 21 being non-PTO, can't really tell if those are true numbers. 22 is interesting. We're going to have to wait until 23, I guess, to see what, what truly happens in October. Now, one thing I want to note is I always say somebody send comments, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do. And one of our YouTube commenters, Grace, said I had forgotten to put in the energy uh, graph that tells you where everything came from for the month. So thank you, Grace. I'm gonna include that here. This month, as you can see here, our October usage was 57% from the power walls, which you're gonna figure is mainly that, you know, overnight usage when the sun's down. So that's about normal or so. We also have about 37% from solar, which is when the sun's up, also pretty normal there, and 6% from the grid. And that 6% from the grid, again, is charging the cars, um, you know, and just using stuff in excess uh, over the power walls. Well, I hope you enjoyed the October update here. As always, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything I can do better, and if you need it, use my referral down below. You guys have a good one. See you next month.